CataractCoach.com. What are our initial impressions with the Alcon Panoptics IOL? So this is the first IOL that's a trifocal for the U.S. market. It's also a toric lens. So you see we're making our main phaco incision 90 degrees away from the steep axis. So we're making the phaco incision at about the 10 or 15 degree meridian. And the steep axis has already been marked off with those little dots on the cornea. And that steep axis is about 100 or 105 degrees. We're going to make our capsular axis. Important to have a good 5 to 5.5 millimeter capsular axis in order to overlap this IOL and hold it in good position, especially with relation to both the toric power at the correct meridian, as well as lining up the central rings of this lens with the patient's visual axis. Now, I do commend Alcon for coming out with a product in both the natural tint as well as the non-tinted version. And the lens comes in toric powers to correct about two, maybe a little bit more, diopters of astigmatism. And that covers the vast majority of the population. This lens has provided pretty good results and patients are pretty happy. But it's still not the fountain of youth. It was never promised as such, but we as surgeons have to make sure that the patients understand that as well. These patients look to us for guidance. In our cataract surgery here, we're just going to do a quick phaco chop, and we'll fast forward to the end of the case here. But because this lens does come in both a, a toric version as well as a non toric version, we're able to avoid using limbal relaxing incisions for the vast majority of the patients here. So let's fast forward and take a look at the lens here. I'm going to load the lens myself in this case here. We'll pick it up, and we can zoom in and look at that, and we'll see the diffractive rings here and that central four and a half millimeters of the optic, there they are. And I think the design certainly is great in that it does deliver, as promised, a very wide range of vision. These patients in general have a very good acuity from about 16 inches to far away, and it seems pretty seamless. Here at the end of the case, we're using those Purkinje images to help line up that central uh, ring right in the middle we also are lining up our toric marks. We have the toric marks there on the lens, and we line those up with the marks on the cornea. And here I'm just lining up the eye and demonstrating to my technician how we line up the toric marks. This patient had a beautiful outcome. Sees 20-20 for near, 20-20 for intermediate range, and 20-20 for distance. So it sounds amazing. But here's the catch. This is a graphic representation that I've made showing what the visual range is for each type of lens, and this is without glasses. And of course, what we're all expecting is the green line at the very top. That green line is the lens of a 25-year-old, perfectly healthy human. And boy, it is great to be young and healthy. But for many of us, me included, 25 years old was a long time ago. A young person can see from very close, from 30 centimeters, maybe even just a foot away from the face, to very far away, with great resolution. Also, perfect, excellent night vision. So that perfect vision, though, that's lost. That's gone. Once you're past age 50, you're not getting that back. So what else we have here is, we've got the vision comparison of a monofocal lens, which would be the yellow line. That's a distance vision lens implant. So from about a meter to far away, it's great vision, great night vision. Very few compromises there. The blue line is the Alcon Panoptics lens, and the orange line is the Restore 2.5. And you can see they both give good, clear vision. But certainly, you can't cheat physics. There's going to be some night glare and halo, and some decrease in contrast. I think the Panoptics and the blue line is the winner between the Restore and Panoptics. It does give, certainly, a lot better near vision. And again, most of my patients are seeing at about 16 inches continuously and seamlessly to far vision. But there are some nighttime glare and halo. It is some decreased contrast. And it's not quite the vision we had in our youth. In fact, it's not even close. Nothing beats Mother Nature. The purple line on the bottom is the cataract lens in a typical patient. So for a cataract patient, any of those things is a big improvement. And our patients are very happy. But be careful of a, pr a plano presbyope. 
A plano presbyope is like that green line at the top, just with worse near vision. And the temptation is, can we put in a diffractive lens in a plano presbyope and make them happy? And the answer is maybe, but it's a lot tougher. And so my advice for now is, Alcon Panomix is a welcome addition to our portfolio of options for patients. I think it has some good performance attributes, not as perfect as being a young, healthy human. And I think in the future, when we have truly accommodating IOLs, that may prove to be a better option. But for now, I encourage you, give the lens a shot and leave a comment here. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.